So, who here has an older sibling? My brother and I used to play a lot of video games together. We would go to school, run back home as fast as we can, turn on the Nintendo 64 and either play Pokemon or Super Mario Brothers. And we would be lost in this world, playing for hours and hours on end. Now, if you have an older brother and you're playing a video game with one controller, what usually ends up happening is he plays while you kind of get to watch. Now, funny enough, I actually enjoyed this whole paradigm where I was watching him playing the game than actually playing the game. So this whole process of being the observer followed me throughout my life. A few years later, a bunch of misfits and I got together and we started this whole process of recording and telling stories. Now, we weren't particularly good at it. We were basically just getting together and playing video games. But as time went on, we started to build a following. We got about 600 different people to watch us play video games in 20 different countries, and we raked up millions and millions of views. Now, we weren't particularly good at what we were doing. Trust me, you can find those videos online, and I urge you not to. As time went on, this team of misfits later turned into a company where we work with businesses all around the world telling great, powerful stories. And I'm here today telling you guys why content matters now more than ever. This world is a very fascinating place. We have about seven and a half billion people. That's an insanely difficult number to wrap your head around, but the numbers get more interesting. If you look at it, half of the world, at least close to that by now, is connected. It's connected in one way, shape, or form. Whether you're connected to the internet through a cell phone, a tablet, a PC, or any device, we have half of the world hooked together. Now, What's interesting is not the fact that we have over 3 billion people connected to the internet. We have over 2 billion people connected to one single platform, Facebook. A decade ago, if you were to go ahead and say, hey, look, we're going to have this ecosystem where there's 2 billion people in one setting, they think you're absolutely nuts. And this causes so much content to be created that as of today, there is over a billion hours of video being uploaded to YouTube every single day. That's 115 years of content and a lot of cat videos. So what does this mean anyway? What is content? Why does it matter and why does it matter now as opposed to any other time? This, what you see behind me, is a studio setting. I'm sure some of you may know what that is. It's very famous. And you would get together with your friends and family, and you would sit down and watch. How it used to happen was this is probably like a 30-minute piece of content. It's a video with directors, cameramen, studios, lights, and the works. And you would sit around, and you'd enjoy watching this. Now, there's nothing wrong with that, but what started happening was that started changing. It started changing slowly, then really quickly, because content has always been moving from platform to platform. It's been revolutionizing since the day we had the newspapers and we jumped onto radio, and from radio to television, and people naturally assumed, okay, he's on radio, what's going to end up happening? He's on TV, what's going to end up happening is that this content is going to stay the same and we're simply going to switch mediums to something like Netflix or any other streaming site. You'd assume that you'd watch the same content in a different setting that makes it easier for you to understand and easier for you to digest and just more sophisticated. It's easier to access. But what's happening is something slightly different. It's not that the platform you consume is changing but the content itself. Years ago, 
you had these companies, and I mean, still today, you have these companies spending millions of dollars on this, but they're only competing for one thing, and that's attention. And it's not attention of anyone else, it's the attention of you and I as content creators. These big marketing companies, these media machines and powerhouses are no longer competing against themselves to get the attention of the people, but they're content, they're simply fighting against you and I. They're fighting against your uncle who is taking way too many pictures of their kids and uploading it on Facebook. They're fighting against your coworkers that's going on exotic trips and posting that on Instagram. That's what they're fighting against. If I tell you and ask you, who is the biggest persona, person, celebrity online, you would assume that it's a corporately owned pop star or some sort of musician or singer or A-list celebrity, but that's not the case. If you take something like YouTube, the most viewed personality on YouTube isn't a singer. You'd assume it's someone like Justin Bieber or Rihanna because a lot of people go to YouTube to watch music. It's actually a guy that plays video games. It's a weird guy who plays video games in Sweden, and his name is PewDiePie. His real name's Felix, but really no one knows about that. He's called PewDiePie. And he plays a lot of video games. He's not particularly good at it, if you've seen his content. But this guy has his content viewed over 16 billion times. That's more than Justin Bieber and Rihanna put together. Now, the reason that his content is viewed so much isn't because of anything else, but because it's relatable, because he's just like you and me. And because you can relate to him, you can trust him. I'll give you another example. This is Salman Khan. No, 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 not that Salman Khan, the other one. Have any of you guys heard of Khan Academy? So there was this guy that wanted to teach his niece maths and science. Now, he's not an educator. He just couldn't be bothered to go in and tutor him day in and day out. So what he decided to do was start teaching and recording all of this and putting it up on YouTube. Funny enough, a lot of people started watching his videos because they could understand what he was saying. Small 20 minute videos of education. Now he's not a teacher or a licensed educator in any way, shape or form. He just creates a lot of content. Right now, Khan Academy has served over half a billion lessons to close to 100 million students across the world. Now all of these stories are fascinating, right? But how does it affect people? How can you actually use content? So we run a digital marketing company and it's really hard to find talent because the society hasn't caught up in terms of education, we're using new technologies that isn't available, so we literally have to go out there and hunt for talent. So the team got together and decided, you know what, our guys are natively on these platforms. They spent the overwhelming majority of their life on Instagram and Snapchat, so why not look there? Personally, I took this as a challenge and I started recording every waking moment of my life. People who know me might not like this and it becomes very intrusive at times, but I started recording going to meetings, meeting up with friends, working till three in the morning, getting drunk. Every single part of our existence was recorded and put up on the internet for everyone to see. For those of you who don't know what an Instagram story is, it's a small video, it's 15 seconds, and it explodes after a day. What I mean by that is that if you don't look at it in 24 hours, you will never see it again. What we started noticing was that we started building a following of entrepreneurs, of marketers, of students, of people that just wanted to know what was going on. And after a while, they started messaging us. They said, hey, look, I love what you guys are doing. I, I don't really know what you guys are doing, but I like it. Can I be a part of this? And we figured, you know what, why not? As of today, our business only hires people through Instagram stories. 
I mean, if anyone in the crowd is looking for a job in marketing, hit me up on Instagram. If you guys have noticed, there is this one video in particular. We did the story specifically for TEDx. It was basically saying, hey, look, we're having this event. Why don't you guys show up? And this video was seen over 100,000 times in Colombo. And looking by the crowd here, I think it worked. It's not just this. We, I mean, our marketing company was kind of established. We had a following. So we figured, how do you make it more attractive? How do you use the problem of content and storytelling to fill bigger shoes and to solve bigger problems? We started an accounting firm for fun. Now, if you guys know about anything about accounting, is that accounting is not sexy at all. And we don't know jack shit about accounting, but we wanted to sell it. And accounting is a very specific type of business, which is very commoditized. It's really hard to be good at accounting because everyone's good at accounting if you're in it, and you really can't specialize. You can't be cheaper because that's a whole other problem. And we wanted to approach this problem differently. What we said was, okay, we found out that there were a lot of people trying to set up businesses in this country. The startup economy was booming, but there was a lot of misinformation. They were behind red tape and closed doors because it always helped someone else's agenda if no one knew about how this process worked. So we figured, okay, so we know this problem. Why don't we go ahead and share it? Why don't we tell every single person that we know how we do these things for free? Seemed like a pretty good idea at the time. So we started writing about it. We started writing about how to register businesses, how to search, uh, build sole proprietorships, what are the laws that you need to understand, how do you find your co-founders, tax laws, EPFs, ETFs, all of the legal jargon simplified so that people like you and I can understand. Trust me, I don't know anything about accounting, and if any one of you guys have looked at my books, you would know that's true. So this concept of telling the story and letting people know and being absolutely transparent worked wonders. Right now, our accounting firm is the single largest company in the country that registers businesses. And all of this is happening because we decided to tell that story. What I'm trying to get at is a very simple message. It's not complicated, it's very simple. You need to understand that everyone should create content. It doesn't really matter who you are or what you do. You can be a rocket scientist, you can be a gardener, or you can be a dropout like me. But you need to tell that story so that every single person knows. Because what's happening in this society is not that you have a degree or qualification to say that you're good at something. What's happening is that people tend to trust transparency and individuality over something else. It's no longer the degrees you hold, it's now the stories you tell. Because no one is really looking for an expert's opinion anymore. People that are looking at your content understand that you haven't figured it all out yet, and that's okay. But what they want to know is that you are in the process of figuring it out and they'd be more than happy to tag along. They'd be happy to hear your story because it's different and they want to follow you in your journey. So I urge you, I implore you, starting today, whether it's simply picking up your phone and taking a picture or writing a blog. It doesn't matter where your content goes. Worry about that later. Find out where your audience is and start telling your story. Whether it's just, whether you already have a company and you have to tell it to your employees or you're just starting someone, it's just starting with something and the only person that's willing to listen to you is your mother. Go out there and tell a story like I just did telling mine. Hope you guys enjoyed.